Um, okay. All right. So, you know, the average carpet cleaning company, according to your statistics, is a husband and wife and maybe a, a son or an employee or two. So you're, I mean, you're kind of looking at 30, 40 bucks per company per truck average. So you, are you selling uh, email access or thank you cards or reminder cards or something else to to generate more funds? Because that sounds like awful cheap, to be honest with you. Way cheaper than yeah, your competitor. And, well, yeah, and that was the goal, right, it is, is to make it affordable. Uh, we understand that people are either just getting started or this industries can go up and down and they have swings. You know, the, the app itself is pretty straightforward. Um, but we did want to make one it to be affordable. Now there are what we call add-ons and, and you're right. So you can do postcards when you want, or, you know, if you have employees, that's it's considered an, an add-on $5. We do have lead generation. So like an online contact form or here you can see from my Burton handyman, um, this is called the online booking form. Um, so you set this up, people can go to this site. Um, and oh, you you offer online booking? Correct. Yep. Yep. Oh, geez. I didn't know that. Okay. Yep. So then they would just add to their car. And like for us, I think this is a great way because if we're busy, we're on a job site, but we want to get back to the customer, you can always have this hyperlink. And a lot of people just text it or you know, send it out and it takes them right here and just say, hey, can you do me a favor? I'm on a job site, but I, I you know, just go to this link and you can just book it online for me. Because this does sync with your calendar too, right? So if you go here and I add to my cart and say book now, what, what's going to happen next is, is, you know, when I go to check out, it, it's just going to show whatever times um, I have available. And then whether that's, you know, Friday at 2 or Saturday at you know, 9, whatever that is, it's going to sync with your calendar and then show the appropriate time. So you can control all that. What about letting them, let's say you got a new customer calls you, like you said, you're a typical owner operator, you're, you're in the middle of cleaning a staircase, uh, you know, that homeowner's watching you, you don't want to spend 10 minutes on the phone. Can you send someone to here, they can fill out all their info, get their email, everything, they can, uh, apparently they can get the price if you put preset prices in there, but not let them get on the schedule? Cause, uh I don't know, man. I know online scheduling works for certain types of demographics and city areas, especially if you got multiple trucks. But uh, my particular schedule, I can't imagine it working. But could you at least get that info so they, they feel somewhat committed and you can call them back later? Yes. And typically what happens is you want to require a deposit for serious. So it's only going to show your available times. It's not going to be officially booked. You're going to get that request in, and it's going to be up to you to accept it, right? So, and then at that time, if you say, hey, I'm going to require 50 percent deposits or 25, whatever your deposit is, that's when you would go ahead and collect that, and then it would go on the calendar. So it's syncing with your calendar, but you still have to confirm it first. Because you're right. What if someone just books it and then it's not a real gig and you just wasted that hour or two hours, right? So well, that or you know, let's say yeah, we go to the north end of town Tuesday and Thursday, south end of the county, you know, Wednesday, Friday, and they're picking the wrong day. Can I enter some perimeters in there where they can, if it knows where they're at by their zip code and only offers certain days? That would be sick. Um. Well, so the perimeter is based on the job. So if I choose gutter cleaning and I know I can only do that on a certain day or time, you can put those filters in, um, but not as far as like a zip code. And then that would lead up to a calendar time and date. No, don't have that option. But that's, that's, good. Wow, that's good to know if that's something you want. Yeah. Well, especially in my Santa Cruz location, we, uh, Scheduling is so tight because the, the city is so compact and traffic is so bad that, you know, something as small as a farmer's market on Wednesday will keep us out of the downtown area. We just won't book anything down there because there's nowhere to park. So we would enter that zip code as, you know, not available on Wednesdays. Got it. 
Okay. Okay, uh, I'm going uh, to shut my mouth and let you keep walking here. <laughs> um, so here's what we call your, your dashboard, your, your home page, and you can customize this. Here's some basic reports that you can, you know, if you want to move some of these around, you can do that, to whatever you want to see. But, again, I know we were – I think we were talking before we went live, but for me, I – uh, knowing your numbers is key for, I think, any business. And I think this dashboard really helps you identify, you know, where you're at and then also where you're going. Um, and I think that's key for any business owner to know. So that, that's the first page here. We set this up sort of in um, kind of like by department. So what we call sales. So it's your customers. Um, you, it's where you're going to create your estimates, your work orders, your invoices, and also your items. So as we mentioned, your preset item list, right? So all the services that you offer. So you can preset those up, or if you're on the fly and it's more of a custom job, that's fine. Obviously, you just do that on the go, either on the desktop or if you're out in the field on the app. Um, and then obviously your financials, we have expenses there. And then as far as the marketing off. Uh, uh, opportunities there. There's some lead generation as far as postcards that we offer or um, emails uh, that we had talked about. Um, uh, we have what we call Customer Finder 360, which enables you to have a map, if you will, a, a circle with a radius and identify either commercial or residential with filters as far as income, maybe pets that they just move in. Um, and then you can target those, so the, the sales and marketing aspects of it. Um, and then the reports. So this, to me, I think is also key. Um, we have some custom out-of-the-box reports here um, that I think is, again, crucial just to know your business. But to go back, again, I know every business is different, so it's not like this is how you have to do it, but go to your sales, your estimates. From here, I'm just going to create a new estimate. You have three options, a standard estimate, pretty straightforward. Options, hey, I want to provide a couple different options. So they're going to choose maybe two of the four options that you have on there. So they don't have to choose all of it or accept everything on your estimate. They're just going to choose maybe one or two options on there. And then I know some folks like to do packages. Maybe it's your premium, gold, platinum, however you label your packages, you could choose that. Um, so I'm going to do a standard estimate. Um, you know, your customers are in here. I'm going to choose this one. It's going to pull up the addresses you have. You know, when you're working on the commercial side, they could have multiple locations. Uh, give it a job. And make sure they make that burrito salt-free, man. Those things just kill me. <laughs> <laughs> do you get the burritos or where do you get there? The bowl, but, man, their stuff is so the salty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so the estimate date, if you have, you know, expiry date for some reason, and then here's your item list that would, again, be preset if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, but all this is customizable. But, again, if, if you yeah. have preset fields, it makes it quick and easy so you can just keep going, add another one, just, you know, obviously just to, for, you know, just to show you what it does. Um, you know, if you require a deposit, is it an amount or is it a percentage to get things going, um, manage your taxes, you know, you, oh, you, you can set up your you have a payment taking feature through here. Can you know when you require a deposit, can they enter a credit card and you're synced up to my bank account or your correct? How's that work? So PayPal, we pay, Venmo, um, yeah, any of them. Nice. Yeah. So and then what, it's also nice too is you again. I don't know how detailed we want to get in, but there's certain settings. You know, when you go into your account, you can set up. So once the estimate is accepted, right, or you receive payment, it'll automatically convert to a work order. Again, just depends on your business. But once they, you know, once we get to this point here, now we do have a vault. So if there's T's and C's or certain, um, uh, I don't know, your your license or if you're bonded, whatever you may have in your vault or important documents, you have a vault and you can upload that um, here. And it's also accessible on the app, right? So, again, I just want to stress the, the T's and C's. Preview, here's your estimate, what it's going to look like. Um, obviously, your company logo, if you prefer that, right there. And then you're just going to go ahead and send that to the customer right there. And then that's it. 
Um, and then once they accept it, then you can go ahead over here and say, all right, I'm going to go ahead and convert that to a work order. Or again, if they accept it and your settings are, I'm going to automatically convert it to a work order, then it's going to do that for you as well. So little kind of seamless automations that I, that I think make just business a lot easier. So from there, you're going to go ahead and assign it. You know, if you have employees, they would show up here. I can sign it to myself, get it on hey, the calendar. Not, it. Yeah. Somebody's uh, trying to log on. They showed me a, a screenshot that says recording started. It looks like they might not be able to join. Is that the possibility? Or are they just looking at it wrong? Is there a, a click-through button to hit join meeting or something? I've never seen that. It says, um, so they're not seeing the desktop here, huh? Well, they're seeing it. Yeah, they're seeing what we were just looking at, but there's a big gray pop-up that says recording started, and they're giving me the impression they can't get past that. Um, maybe try to rejoin. I don't know if it might have froze right when they first joined in. Yeah. Uh All right. Keep going. I'll try not to interrupt okay. um, And then uh, you can color code it. So some businesses, they like to assign a color, whether it's employee or type of job. And that's just, again, for me, it's more aesthetics. Like I just want to take a snapshot of the calendar and just see some people like the pretty colors just to, you know, again, it's either by employee or just distinguish between each job or employee on the actual um, mm -hmm. calendar or the schedule. And then you got this, you know, common things. Is it reoccurring? All that type of stuff there. And then you can save it, and then it's going to go on the calendar. And then from there, you know, employees can log their time. And, and then the app, you know, you could have quick little notifications. So once you hop over to the app, you open up the work order, you can tell the customer, hey, I'm on my way. I'm, on, I'm five minutes out, ten minutes out, you know, those types of things. And then uh, send them messages. It doesn't, and uh, it doesn't set up a little map where they're watching you approach like House Call does, right? It does not do that, no. Um, uh, however, there is an employee tracking. So if you're a business owner and you have that on, and your employee is out in the field and going from job to job, you could see that. You can see when they stop at Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, there's somewhere where they're not or supposed worse. to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you can convert. It looks like you can convert this work order to a PDF as well, so they can't screw with it. And you are full. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Okay, keep going. So from there, you know, once you complete it, again, if you hit complete, it'll create an invoice um, automatically for you. Or, again, I know we're just kind of going through it, but um, create invoice. Um, again, it's pretty redundant. You know, just carry everything over. Tips, you know, here's where you would check. Am I going to do credit card tax? Um, check. Preview it. Um, I don't know, the credit card setup on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that, preview it, and then you send it. And it's important that when you set up your customers, there's um, a place that do they prefer texts or email, and then you can dictate how, how this is sent. And in, in modern day, a lot of people are actually preferring text. So th this can come across either via email, text, and or both. How you set up your customers is up to you, and if that's a conversation you have with your customers or – what we'd recommend in the T's and C's is, you know, when you agree to do business with us or service with us, you're agreeing for us to communicate with you either via email or text. So they're agreeing to that in your T's and C's as well. So you can um, send the invoice via text right from your phone as soon as you're done. The technician can, the owner can. Exactly. Yep. Yep. The estimates, the invoice, and then a lot of people, you know, just it comes across as a short little URL or hyperlink. They click open it. If it's an invoice, they can click pay now. They pay it. It records it. Or if you're on site, obviously, you know, you get cash or check, then you just record payment. Super slick. And that's it. All right. Um, what's next? Um, so
so we, you know, we can go into um, sort of the add-ons if you want, or the the marketing features, because you know, I I do think this sets up the side. There's a lot, you know, scheduling CRM. It's out there, right? But I think as a business owner, not just scheduling and getting that stuff out there, but it's the little things that you're doing in between the jobs to keep that relationship. So from the SMS blast, which is becoming a lot more popular now, emails mm-hmm. are sort of kind of being inundated or an SMS will stand out. The automation components, again, these are the things that are happening once an action is done. So an estimate is, done, is sent, but maybe 48 hours later, it's still sitting there. They didn't accept it. You haven't closed it out. We can send them a reminder for you. Um, you know, whether that's 24, 48 hours, or maybe it's a thank you text. It doesn't have to be all about sales. Sometimes it can be, hey, I just want to thank you for your business. So, or six months down the road, hey, you're due for your service. So all this automation can be set up. And once it's set up from the beginning, it's set up for life. So it's not like you're doing this every time for every customer. It's across all action items, right? So if the estimate is sent, what happens a day later, two days later? Once the invoice is paid, what happens, right? Is it three months, four months, six months? So you can have as many automation components that you want. Um, I think I was telling you this morning, the voicemail blast, that, that's relatively your, one of our newer features. Again, it's a ringless voicemail drop that you're doing. So you're recording a voice message, whether it's, you know, um, it's a Thanksgiving special, spring special, uh, thank you for your business. Um, record it, and then we'll. What do you mean by ringless? So it doesn't ring on their phone. It, I don't know if you've gotten any of these, but they're they no. are. How, how do you know it's there waiting for you? How do they receive it? So all they get is a notification now on your phone saying, "I don't know." So it sounds like you haven't, but I've been getting no. them more and more lately. Where I just look down on my phone and it says, "You have one new voicemail," and you're like, "What?" And you think you might have missed it, right? But it's a ringless voicemail, and it's literally, hey, does it ring? It just sends them the voicemail that you've recorded. So they obviously pick it up, hear it. Hey, this is Mike. want to thank you again. It's great doing business with you. Or, hey, I just want to let you know that we're doing a promotion this uh, fall. Um, Love to talk to you about it. Or, uh, I mean, again, whatever you want to do, it's good. Could that be set up to go automatically like 24 hours after a job to say, hey, thank you, you know, if, uh, whatever, spots came back or you still can't find your cat, give me a call? So that, so we'll, we'll probably work on that. So when we introduced this, we first did just text communication, right, test blast, and then we worked in the automation component. So um, I'm going to get with my developers to see if that's possible. Um, but we did it with the email. We did it with the, the SMS text. So I would imagine with the voicemail, there should be a way to be able to automate mm-hmm. that as well. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, email blast, again, pretty self-explanatory. Um, postcard on demand, that's, you know, again, hey, I want to send out a postcard um, right now because we're going to do a special. Um, and, you, you know, you can pick and choose the, the customers you have. And how you set up your customers, too, you can group them um, uh, several different ways. So, that, again, that's up to you just, again, to view your customers a little differently. Um, Who's mailing out that card, and, and how customized can I get with the front and back? Uh, you can get very customizable with it. So you can upload your own images uh, however you want. We do have some standard templates, but if you want to upload your own image and stuff, absolutely, you can customize that. It's a third-party company that we work with, and then what we do on the back end is we make sure that we have delivery confirmation and that they were mailed. And they're jumbo postcards, so they're like five and a half by 8.3 or something, so they're... 80 cents each, no matter how many? A dollar. A dollar each? Yeah. Oh, Oh, I said yeah, so the postcard on demand, eighty cents. I'm sorry, I was I was looking at the customer finder three sixty. Yeah, eighty cents for the automation. Yep. So that's the automation uh, is hey, the invoice is paid, and then I'm gonna send them a, a thank you postcard, you know, three days later or something. But if I or send out a thousand postcards for a Christmas whatever, it's still eighty cents. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. 
keep going. What's this one? So this is the customer finder 360. So this would be for leads. So maybe you're trying to get into a new area. Um, you can use customer finder 360 to use this radius map, if you will, and go up here and choose your filters. If you're going after maybe businesses, consumers, new homeowners, it's up to you. But you can drag this and expand it right. and then apply the filters up here again what type of structure, the income, do they okay. rent, do they home, their gender, age, children, all that stuff, right? So carpet cleaners, yes, they have children, perfect, okay. Pet owners, yes, perfect, okay. So I want to choose all that. And then from there, it's going to pull up a list, huh. and then you can dictate, hey, I want to send this to 100 people, right? And it would search, and then we would go ahead. Um, it'll walk you through the steps. Again, you're going to bra uh, customize or brand the postcard, and then they would all be sent out to the the, the addresses that pull up. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. So I could hand pick, you know, if I'm doing businesses, I see one business in there that's already a customer or someone I don't want to do business with. I can delete them from that radius. Correct. Yes. Yes. You wow. can dictate who they're going to. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. What do you got going here? Oh, I was just trying to get to this next step here. Let's, uh, this is going to be invalid. And then AZ. And it walks you through how, how it's going to work and what the postcards look like. So this is where you would design it. But again, you can go ahead and actually upload your own. So it's completely up to you. But we have some of these templates over here on the side that you can pick and choose from. So you can do a photo with text overlay. And, it, and it, yeah. uh, on the back, as it's set up to, to put the postal code across the bottom and keep you out of that area and all that stuff. Exactly. Yep. So this will be the front. Or again, here, upload your own design. And it'll tell you the, you know, the, the format of the criteria. Um, Have you showed this to back. John, Don? Have to you showed this John to the John folks at John, Don, Scott? Uh-uh. No? They tried to create no. something like this. Oh, geez, I don't know. It might have been 10 years ago now. It's called My Easy Marketing, and they could never get it. They could never accomplish what you've, you've done here. Awesome. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. And then this is where it's going to show you, obviously, all the people there and then preview and then purchase. So, again, those are some of the marketing components and, again, some of the, the automation that, that's offered. Um, and then the add-on. So, online booking, that was what I was showing you earlier. Hey, if you want to direct them to a website, they can go ahead and choose the items and, and book it online. The lead contact form, sort of a more simpler version where, hey, here's this form. I want this set of information. And then it comes in at the very top as an inquiry or as a lead. So this is embedded on your website. Or again, hey, someone called you. I'm so sorry. I, I don't have time right now. I'm, I'm on a job site. You can send them the link to your contact form, have them fill it out, and then you can follow up with them later. But again, it's going to come in there under inquiries. And then from there, convert them to a customer, create the estimate, and go from there. After reviews, obviously that, that's huge. Um, send out reviews. Typically that's done. That can be automated. So you know, most, I recommend sure how that works. If Pretty I want to send people well, only, you know, the, well, I use, I use all. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm on Google, Facebook, Yelp. Yep. yep. So you're putting the link in there. So you're sending all five or six to that particular right. customer and letting them pick? Whatever you want, yeah. It's completely up to you. So if you wow. want to send all and say, I mean, I, to me, I think that would be a lot to ask of a customer, but, you know, depending well, on... Well, they would pick them. whichever one they came from or whatever one they feel comfortable with, which is usually Google at this point. Yep. Um, yep. But if, if you knew they were a Yelper and you marked that, mark that, that client as, you know, Yelp is their referral source, uh, would it automatically just send them the Yelp, or you got to set it up? So you would set it up. I mean, you you can send them. You copy and paste obviously your your business pages here, you mm -hmm. know, whatever your review page is, and then you could set up 
the customized text that's going to be sent out um, to them, um, or it can be automatically sent for them. So is it based on the work order is completed, or is it when the invoice is paid? And then you would customize either the email or the um, SMS text. Um, somebody here is saying they're trying to watch, they don't hear any audio in the text. They got to turn on the sound or what? Yeah, I think it's that the same. I'll try to copy and paste. Uh, I'll type in the phone number in the conference room. Oh, you can dial in too. Yeah, you can dial in, or if you or click on the phone icon. Will you? Uh, it's a lot of. Uh, I wanted to grab that phone number because I didn't realize people could dial in like that. Can you text me that phone number and I'll share it elsewhere? Sure. Okay. You're a multitasker. I like it. <laughs> so obviously, you got all kinds of ways to market to people, unlike anything I've seen. Uh, all kinds of ways to just communicate with them after they're already a customer. But can we? Uh, where, where do you want to go next? The scheduling and routing and whatnot. Um, well, we 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 sort of did that, but I'll I'll show you my calendar. So as we yeah, let's just see the calendar and. You know, your drop and drag and what it looks like if you're running one truck or three trucks or whatever. You. All right. I just sent that to you, Mike. Okay. Okay. Um, so your schedule here. Um, so, again, the color coding, you know, if you wanted to do it by employee, you could do that. Um, or just have one color or by job, right? So it's really up to you. But yeah, if you wanted to move this appointment over here, um, move this one over you here. You don't have the screen open, Scott. Oh. You got the conference room open. I can't see the schedule. There we go. All right, now can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So here would be your schedule, and then you could have the settings. You know, do you want to have your week start on a Sunday or a Monday or a Tuesday? Some people have their weeks, you know, set up differently. Um, do I want to view by employee? Uh, I just want to see a certain employee, um, like Steve's jobs. I can do that. All employees, um, or just what the employees see, the month, the day, the week. Um, but, again, like you were saying, if you just want to move jobs, you can go ahead and do that. And I'll update everything on the back end for you. Oh, so happy to confirm. That's cool. Okay. Yep. Can those be yep. color coded okay. by zip code? By zip code. Um, so the color coding is done when you so back when we were on the work order. You're going to choose the color. So when you create the work order, so if you know this customer is in a certain zip code, you would say, okay, it's going to be blue. Now, there has been some questions that saying, I want to know every time I assign Joe Smith a job, I want it to be blue, purple, or red. So I'm not sure where we're at with that and if we're going to go and offer a way to say, if this happens, whether it be a zip code, employee, type of job, type of customer, it's always going to be this color. I don't know. Right now, it's just manual. So as you set the work order up, it will be up to you to say, all right, you know what, this is the 85250, it's going to be orange. So you would dictate that right now. Well, it'd be handy, you know, let's say your CSR is looking at the schedule, trying to find a, uh, a spot for, you know, all yours were Scottsdale. Whatever. Let's say they got someone in Mesa, all your Scottsdales are oranges, Mesa's blue, they're going to look for other blue jobs, which, you know, color is a whole lot easier to find than reading a, a zip code or whatever. Yep, that makes sense. Agreed. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yep. That's happened automatically, or you pick a color. Uh, that'd be a cool feature. Yeah. But, but what do I know? Yeah. 
Um, so let's see. I mean, that's, um, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I can see if we can show the app um, on the phone here. If you yeah, let's see. Look at that. And now, um, let's see here if I can find myself. Get this to work. Tell me if you're seeing it. Um, I think that's a phone, yeah. Yeah, okay. So what does the home page look like when you first log on? That? So this will be your home page here. So here's, um, yeah, your home page. It looks like I need to charge my phone. I hope it, um, but again, you're going to have your dashboard similar to the desktop. Again, I, I think it's important to know your numbers. So all those reports there are your dashboard right there, your fingertips, just to give an idea of where you're at. Um, but the technician version is not going to have – the technician is just going to show the route, um, give them access to the customer's history, give them the ability to create an invoice or an estimate, but not much more exactly than that. Right. Right? Okay. You're right, yep. So that dashboard is for business owners. The employee app is limited. You're correct, yep. Um, okay. I, I really like this. This I was really proud of this feature when we launched it. Um, it's called the Route Planner. So you can look at my jobs for tomorrow. Um, what I like about it is because I, I really prefer to have everything in one spot. And I know I said that earlier where market is just one, right? Your email marketing, your finance, your scheduling, everything. I want it to be in one location. So today, tonight, I can say, what, what, is my, what am I going tomorrow? So here, job number one. I can pull it up. If I need to go straight to the work order, I just hit view, and I'm right there. You're so doing again, all this problem. Finger. You just tapped on that black box, and all that opened up. Is that how that's happening? Exactly, yes. Okay. But more importantly, it's like like you were saying, I want to look at my jobs, and can I add another job? And if so, where? Can I move them? If I had to move my two, my second appointment at 1130? Like, but again, I can also click on it and know who it is, know where I'm going. I, I, that's, to me, I like. And then you see that little, I can call them, right? I mean, boom, right there. Yeah. Just one click call. Yeah. So that's called the route. Uh, I, I like that. Okay. Hey, it's something that you and I were talking about before we went live. Um, offline usage. And obviously, you know, the, the, the Phoenix Valley there, whatever you call your Mm -hmm. Super Metroplex, you probably got killer five bar service the whole thing. But some of us live in the wilderness where, you know, one bar is, is a rarity in some spots. So if my tech gets to a job, he, he's out in the Shire and he, he's filling out an estimate, he can come, he can convert that to a, a receipt, send it to the customer and all that. But then when he gets back into range, he can sync it. So it all gets logged in and the, the mothership keeps track of that. You can't. So, I'm, so there's certain limitations. So when you're offline, you can't send anything out because there's no data, right? So there's certain little things. So when I go to my offline, um, offline sync, there's you know certain things that I can see. I'm going to be able to see my customers, my items, and I can create estimates and invoices and so forth. But if I don't have data, I can't email that, text that. I can't do that. Will it will it hold until it, until the tech gets in the range, or he has to get in the range and then then hit send or sync, or is it waiting to go as no, it gets it, in the range? Yeah. It, it, you'll have to do it once you get in the range. You'll have to okay. send that. Yep. Okay. Very good. Yep. Uh, um, but a, you know, a similar experience. So if if you want to go to your schedule, or again, so. Let's just go to your estimates, click on it. I'm going to go down here to the plus button down there in the bottom right. I hit plus. There's my uh, estimate options. So I'm just going to do a standard one. Uh, I choose the customer. I choose the commercial address. And then I'm going to do carpet cleaning there. Okay, check mark. And that looks good. And then you hit the check mark in the upper right corner, and I just hit send. 
Now, you can request signatures, obviously, too. So if they have to sign off on it, you can do that, and then you just send it out. And awesome. That's it. Can we see what yeah. your uh, – your, tell me more about your email server, and can we see your WYSIWYG editor in action? Okay. So for the email blast? Well, no, I, I'm sending a, a, a one email to a customer, whether it's an estimate or the job's done, and I assume you have templates. Uh, but what does that email editor look like, and where do I go to look at old old emails, send emails, uh, replies, or whatnot? Okay. Um, so we can go back. So when I – we, we, well, we can do here. So if, if I were to go, you can always edit them on the fly, too, but you can also set up your templates on, on the um, uh, the desktop. So yeah. You can do that on your, your, your desktop. So anytime you're doing, like, your settings as far as templates and stuff like that, that'll be on the desktop. But if I'm going to send this out, you see how this pops open here? Estimate number, here yeah. totally. So here's where I could go in and, you know, edit this if I didn't like what it said or if I'm going to change the subject line. I'm just going to delete it, right? Okay. So um, whatever you wanted to add or, you know, modify. I mean, that, that, that's it's a straight editing as far as that's concerned. But, yeah, you can have your own templates and so forth. Okay. So they replied back. Does that go to my Gmail or does it go to my Marquette server? Market server. Well, I mean, do, you, do you have an email so program built into this? Well, so if they, so if you send, so two things here. So if you send them an estimate and they accept it, it can automatically convert. But you're just going to get a notification that the customer has accepted it, and that's it, right? So some people are just working on text, so they're going to get a text. They click on that hyperlink, it opens up a PDF, and they're going to click. Accept. You're going to get a notification. Customer has accepted it, and then from there you go ahead and create your work order, or automatically be created for you. But do you have an in and a sent box and a draft box, all that kind of stuff that you'd find in Gmail? Uh uh Nope. No. Okay. Um. If I want to see that I – I want to remind myself, did I send that customer that – the invoice or that estimate, I can go into their profile and, and there's a list of prior actions taken or something? Yeah, you could see all that. You could either go to, you know, the customers or if you wanted to go to your estimates, right? So just depending on where you're going or how you wanted to find that information – you can go all your open estimates here. So is it scheduled? Was it submitted? Where are we at? Um, looks like I got some in draft. Um, or if you're trying to find a work order. I guess I guess it just depends on what you're you're trying to find there. Um, well, go to a profile of one of your customers that has some history there. Hopefully you you've created one that you know has a couple of mock invoices. Maybe you want to do this on desktop, but it'd be a little more full featured versus the phone. It, or yeah, it can. So, so, so here's the customer here. They're, so Chipotle, here's their customer. Here's the contact or email. Um, I can look at the schedule to see what's scheduled, um, and then I can look to any expenses that are tied to it. Or I mean, where's their history? This is their this history. Is the so estimate, so where's their history? Or they only have estimates. In this fictional so there, so you view all thirteen there. Okay, can I open that? Uh, let's say you know, I got a tech on a job. Uh, she wants something different than last time. Can the tech open it up, look at the invoice from a year or two ago, and see what we charged there and what rooms we did and all that? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So if I click on this one and went on invoices, and I click on view all. And I come here and I say, oh, I'm going to scroll down to September, so April of 2019. And I can go ahead and take a look at it. I can see that it was paid. There's no balance due. But where's the details for that, that job? 
the invoice basically. That's it there. Okay. This so, is the invoice. Yep. Invoice. Yeah, but if we had itemized it, it, broken it down by all the different rooms, staircase, got got the otherized, blah blah blah, that would be there. Yeah. So this one here was carpet cleaning, up to three bedrooms, carpet, two bedrooms, towel, grout cleaning, right? For one twenty five. Yep. Okay. Sheesh. Got everything going on. Yep. Um and then there's there's um you know, to go back to the expenses too. So there is a, there's a way to track. So it'll keep track of your mileage automatically for you if you want. So if you don't want to record that, um, you know, again, more for tax write-offs and expenses. Um, trying to think. Um, virtual estimator. Um, this will show you if you type in the address, you can look at the phone and, you know, you can see the size and square footage. Uh, and there's a link. Uh, you got a Zillow link, so you can see the interior photographs from the last last sale. I do that a lot. We do. Actually. You yep, do? We do. Yep. Oh my, come on, yeah, really? We do have that that integration that you when you type in an address, you can see there the Zillow information. Um, <laughs> We also um, work with HomeWise, so I know in some industries that, you know, they, they go to HomeWise, so if you're going here and you're looking to see how much flooring is going to be and uh, what's going to be, you know, I'm going to install carpet and, you know, what's the uh, what average. That? I never heard of HomeWise. What's that? HomeWise, uh, it's, I guess it's more of in our handyman space. Um, contractors where they're doing services. So it just gives you what the market is um, to do a certain service. So whether it's drywall or um, oh, wow. painting or anything like that, it will kind of give you what this area is paying, what the market's paying. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Do um, you want to unmute the audience, see if we got any questions from the uh... – Who's hanging in there? Is that how this works? Yeah, let me. Uh... Is that is there seven people on here? Is that what that means? Up top. Uh... Looks like, yep. Okay. So are they unmuted? Do they have to push a button if they want to ask a question? Uh oh. All right. There we go. All right. So you've all been unmuted. If anybody has a question, uh, feel free to jump in. Somebody's <laughs> snoring. Stolen is snoring. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Nine. Hey, uh, how do you upload, you know, all the client history, what comes with it? You know, when I upload, is all their history and all the details going to come from another program? Yeah. Yep. So we'll help you with that import. So, you know, depending on what service you're coming with, um, depending on what they offer as an export from their service, um, send it to us and we'll help you get everything in there as far as your history, your ride items. Yeah. Kelly's asking if it links with Google Maps. I got to assume so. All right. Yeah. And you can choose different, you know, if you don't like Google, some people don't like Google Maps, but, you know, you can choose, you know, default map um, that you want to use. Good question. Yeah, I assume it has to link to Google Calendar too, right? So we sync with Google. So we'll sync with your contacts. So let's just say you're out and you put them in the market app as a new contact. We'll push it out to your Google contacts. Google contacts, but we'll show them my Google Calendar. So we can right? push that out, yeah, but it's not, it's yeah. not going to go back into here. Um, so we prefer that you would add it here, and then that way if you do have the online booking, then because the online booking form can only read this schedule, your your schedule here that we 
keep track of, we can't continually to read your, your Google Calendar, but this one we can. So, if, in other words, if I add something to my Google Calendar, it's totally unrelated, whatever, I'm having dinner with the wife at Chipotle, it's not going to show up on your schedule. <laughs> no, no. But anything I add to Marquette's going to show up on my Google schedule. We will sync to Google, yeah. Okay. And what would you say about the online booking? Does that that only happens once it's all been accepted? I was, I was just saying, yeah. So if you have the online booking, you know, right before they're checking out, it'll display the open times. It's only looking at this one. So if, you know, you have a vacation yeah. or dinner with your wife at that time, it's, yeah. It's okay. No, it's not going to know that. All right. Um. Uh, well, I think I'm tapped out on questions, man. Can't think of anything else. Okay. So you're coming to uh, the market fest in um, what are we at? A month and a couple of days, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. November sixth. Yeah. So you and uh, Julie are coming. Are you bringing any staff with you, or kids, or anything like that? It'll just be us two. Yeah. It'll just be us two. Have you guys ever uh, cleaned carpet or tile or upholstery or anything? I have not. No, I've not been in that. Industry. Oh, uh, no, I'm. I'm. Uh, I. I was growing up. I painted houses and did maintenance work. So that's my service background. Was a, a painter, and then I did a lot of um, commercial maintenance uh, to pay my way through college at like restaurants and bars, just doing odd ends and then jobs there. So, so you, I know you didn't go to the experience last week. Have you ever been in a group of carpet cleaners before? <laughs> we might need to prepare you for what you're about to experience. <laughs> I, I've gotten a taste of it on, on definitely social media. I, I definitely uh -huh. um, can see that. I can sense it. I, you can feel it. You, some of the things that are said, it's just, wow. Yeah, it's um, a lot of fun. We're a different breed than the other service providers. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're. I mean, you're. You're looking at other other service, uh, whether they're forums or Facebook pages for pool and window and gutter cleaners and all that. Do do any interact and in all? You know? I I would say you guys take it to the next level, and I think I and I think it's all for the good. I mean, obviously, some of the comments I've read, I was like, that probably didn't need to be said. Um, yeah. But I think for the most part, I I think you you guys are genuine and you try to help and you you put your knowledge out there and your recommendations and your just your experience of and all your knowledge that you guys have just to help some of the younger folks. And I think that's great. Like I. I wish when I talk to other industries, I say, you know, you guys, if you just start your channel and just broadcast yourself and tell about your experiences and your knowledge, you don't know how helpful that is to just other people. Like it's, I think it's huge. And obviously I'm just saying the, the positive stuff. I, obviously there's negative and people can say what they want, but yeah. I've also read one post and I've taken it one way and someone else took it another and it starts something. I'm like, well, I, actually, I didn't read it like that. But now that I've read his comment, now I can actually see how he took it, right? So yeah. I think when you read something and you ask 10 people to read it, they're going to have 10 different ways, feelings, emotions that they experience when they read that same comment. So it's just, it's how your day is going. You've got a crap day. Oh, it's really, yeah. Something, it's, yeah. It's unfortunate, so... I think they're going to take it a totally different way in the morning than they would in the afternoon when their dog tired and they've, you know, been sort of yeah. kept all day. But that's, that's yeah, just yeah. life. But, um, yeah, it is an amazingly helpful industry because I think, you know, particularly the old guys, you know, I've been running Mikey's board since 2006. I've been on, uh, you know, way before Facebook, there were, you know, a couple of forums. And, and that same type of format since 2000, and many of us are still around. We're still talking to other carpet cleaners about the same old crap, free spray and dog pee, 19 years later. Yeah. And, and many of us have been on every night for 19 years. <laughs> haven't haven't missed a I missed a beat. Um, yeah. But lately, you know, through Facebook, there's been just an amazing amount of people coming online and 
and getting such a boost to their business. I mean, that's what, when I, uh, you know, I worked for other companies since, uh, from 88 to 2001. And I never, you know, I never went to school. I didn't have any business skills or anything. I, you know, I worked for a couple of companies, but once the internet started and allowed me to communicate with, you know, at the time hundreds and then became thousands of carpet cleaners, you know, I got that overnight confidence essentially to go out on my own. And that's, that's what's happening. I, mean, I see it every day especially on uh, Courtney's page where, yeah, I don't know what they're typing in to find this carpet cleaning opportunity or franchise or, you know, uh, carpet cleaning business or something. But you see the same question. Hey, I'm thinking of getting in an industry. What kind of equipment should I get? Yeah. And, yep. you know, whether they choose to search or ask the question and somebody takes the time to answer that. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, the good thing about my, my old school forum is, you know, the search feature and the ability to, so easily go back to 2006 and read your way forward. I mean, it's it's a free college education and, and business and cleaning skills and everything involved in and running a you know carpet cleaning business, whether it's just you or you you've got 50 50 employees and you know 100 trucks or whatever. Yeah, um, and I yeah, and I think you're right. When instead of taking eight hours in a day to learn something that someone that's been doing it for 20 years could tell you how to do it in five minutes. Why, I mean, why not? I mean, that's just such a huge opportunity and it's just, it's giving people and technology is helping obviously giving people the advantage to start their own business, but the knowledge is actually what's propelling them to actually grow quicker and faster because they're not making the same ex- ex- mistakes that everyone else made. Right. So mm-hmm. they're becoming more efficient, quicker where in, you know, in the past, it was like you just kind of learn and you trudge through it, and then it just took you a while to figure it out. Where now they're like, I know what not to do, and they're, you know, it's, it's a huge help, it's helping everyone. So, mm-hmm. well, what you'll see at my event is, you know, the veterans, guys like myself and Mark Sager, and a whole bunch of guys have been doing it, whatever, 30, 40 years, working side by side with a guy that might have been doing it for 30 minutes, you know. And what I try and do is take those new guys that rather than just make them, you know, bucket fillers and hose pullers, I want them, you know, I want the, the whole experience to be educational for them. So the old guys are going to take them by the hand, maybe four or five of them, and go show them some unique upholstery cleaning technique or grout cleaning or repair. Or, uh, I put together a list on the, on the, the Mikey's Fest event page, and there's like, I don't know, 10 or a dozen unique things that we're going to be doing on site cleaning and and not just you know a display at a trade show where you're you're polishing nine square feet of marble you know the whole weekend over and over and over we're actually cleaning right. you know, there's a filthy tile and you know god knows how much carpet and upholstery pieces and vinyl and you know the list goes on and on and on and so for these new guys to actually sit down and be able to do this with a guy that's done it a million times just invaluable. And I, you know, I don't, I don't expect you to, you and your wife to sit there and learn how to clean tile and grout, but more to kind of stand back and observe all that. And I think you're going to learn a lot about our industry watching that happen. And then on the speaker day, you know, I got, I forget how many, but some really unique speakers. And it might be a guy that's, you know, 70 years old and doing it for 50 years and just going to talk about, you know, how he's gotten to this point and what, he, what his retirement plans are. And, and then I got a, you know a guy from uh, Seattle coming. That's I don't know. He's probably got twenty five, thirty employees. He's in the. He's almost like a. Uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call the the top five hundred list for that city and growing businesses and just killing, expanding like crazy. And we've all watched him grow. You know, from from one truck struggling up to the seemingly the largest carpet cleaner in the Seattle area. He, and wow. I mean, you know how hard it is to find employees these days. He's he's finding them seemingly no problem. And, and that demographic, where you think all those, you know, the workforce in that town would just be making YouTube videos or creating carpet cleaner software or something, where they didn't have to sweat and deal with dog pee all day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I think you know you're in for a real treat. You're going to leave this this event knowing way more about the industry and and our vibe, basically. You're going to really enjoy it. Yeah. No, yeah. I look forward to it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are going to be 
you know, turned on to what you got here. It's an amazing product. I mean, it's so full of features. It's incredible. For $25. Holy miracles. So you, you did yeah. record that, Scott. You can send me the, the, the file and I'll load it to my YouTube page. It gets a lot of views. Um, yeah. And yeah, my daughter was 